and welcome back to my channel. So since the last video, we have had two races. We have had Argentina and we have had the United States. So instead of doing a one video, I decided just to combine them and do it as the Americas, as it is uh, North America and South America. And we're just going to have a little bit of an extended one and do 10 moments from it. Starting off with Argentina, they're not going to be in any particular order, so don't shout at me if you don't agree with someone being in like P1 or P10. It's There is no order to these, I promise, uh, not when it's a video like this where it combines the two. Otherwise, that just gets super confusing. So anyway, starting with Argentina. First up, I, I have the Honda Team Asia Moto2 riders. They have had some stellar weekends recently. That win in Indonesia for Somkia Chantra, and then going into Argentina where they both got both got on the podium. And it has been absolutely amazing to see how far they have come and how much they have both improved since uh, since the start of this year. So. I am looking forward to really seeing what they can do, seeing as there was that whole rumour about Taka Nakagami's seat being up for grabs to what was more than likely going to be Ayagura. But now Somkia has kind of thrown his hat into the ring by being, by being a race winner now and being on the podium as well again. So it's been pretty... Uh, I think it's going to be a pretty hard choice if they do decide to replace Taka, who who they're going to go for, if they are going to go for another Japanese rider, or if they are going to maybe throw some Kias into, into the mix. I don't know, but I'm super excited to see how this goes. Second on my list is Fermin Aldeguer's first pole position. I, I don't know if anyone has I don't know how many people watch Moto 2 or Moto 3 or if you just stick to Moto GP but I love Moto 2 and Moto 3 and with Fermin Fermin obviously wasn't in Moto 3 last year he came from European Moto 2 but that boy is absolutely one to watch he is phenomenal so he is the youngest pole sitter in history and apparently has had uh, MotoGP teams already knocking on his door trying to talk to him about a possible ride in 2023. However, due to his, his age and due to this being only his rookie year, his manager Hector Fabel has already said that he will be in Moto2 in 2023, which I personally believe is a fantastic idea. Sometimes I think that they move them up too soon into Moto GP when they seem to be the next big thing and they don't actually give them enough time to properly learn the ropes of the intermediate class and um, before they move up and they're almost a bit like a fish out of water when they get up into Moto GP and if you don't prove yourself in your first year everyone writes you off you're rubbish you're terrible yada, 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 and then they just whack you back down and it's almost like a career ender so I'm really happy that they have decided to take the sensible option and to keep him in Moto2 for another year. But I am super, super stoked to see him in MotoGP. Absolutely, absolutely unreally excited to see that. I can't wait. I really can't wait. So third on my list, I have Alicia Sparrow's maiden win in MotoGP. So... Um, it's been a long time coming, really. First win on his 200th Grand Prix, which is a stat and a half. Uh, the Aprilia has looked so much better this year. It started to look a bit better last year as well. But it's nice to see that they have finally made that little that little extra step to get Alish onto the top step and. Maybe it's a sign of things to come. Maybe they will be fighting more towards the, the sharp end of things. I do hope it's not just a flash in the pan because if it is, then it's it's gone very... Yeah. I hope it's not just a flash in the pan. I hope this is the start of another manufacturer being added into the mix to really get get things a bit more spicy. So we go need, we wait and see, I guess. 
I hope I haven't just put my little commentator's curse on things here because we all know that that's completely real with the amount of times that you be commentating or you see people commentating on someone and immediately they go down in the next corner. It's just unbelievable. Uh, so third on my list, I have Marco Bedzecki. So if you haven't watched the Argentina Grand Prix, watch it or re-watch it, whichever. Bez's performance on his third race to get ninth is just incredible. He's always done well in Argentina, except for that year in Moto2 where he was with um, on the Tech 3 KTM where that bike was just no bueno. But he's always done well in Argentina. He got his first victory in Moto3 there. He's done well there in Moto2 when he moved up to the Sky VR46 team. So it seemed fitting that he got his he's had his best performance so far in his rookie season in Argentina. I hope that this is I hope he can carry this forward and build on it going into other races, not just races that he not just circuits that he likes, but circuits that he isn't as comfortable in. Uh, I hope it is just that extra building block in his rookie year to be like, yeah, I, I do deserve to be here. I know not many of them have ever come into a championship like Moto GP and thought, hmm, maybe I don't belong here. They like I'm full, surrounded by all these amazing riders. But you you never know really what's going on in someone's head. And I hope that when he has these when he looks back at these moments and he sees where he's come from, even in his first race, to his second, to his third, and he can go, Yeah, I totally belong here and he does i have a lot of love and respect for marco he's a fantastic rider he's a fantastic human being and i would love to see him back on the top step if i'm perfectly honest love it so fifth on my list i have and last for the argentina argentine argentinian selection that's the word and last for the argentinian selection i have the aspar boys <laughs> So they had an incredible, if not slightly heartbreaking at the end, Argentine, Argentinian Grand Prix. I want to say Argentine. I don't know why. Argentinian Grand Prix. And it's not just even Moto3. It's Moto2 guys had a good time as well. So they had the win for Sergio. And Sergio's move in Argentina to get that win was bold, was kind of scary, was absolutely mind-blowing really don't know how he did it i have so much respect for him and if they did like rider of the day he would have been my rider of the day so unbelievable but it's kind of comes on the flip side of ethan's unfortunate mechanical where he was leading and he did end up having to uh retire well not even retire he he stopped on track, really. He had to pull off the track. And it's so unfortunate because he was leading so for so long and he was leading by quite a margin. So and it comes on like the the flip side of Ethan's mechanical when he was leading. And it's really unfortunate when something like that happens and it's completely taken out of your hands. It's not like you crashed, it's not like you had someone else take you out whilst you were battling. To just completely lose your your win your first win of that year due to a mechanical like that. It's really heartbreaking. But he showed how amazing he was. So, yeah, I hope that he can kind of take that moving forward as well and forget about the heartbreak of it. Just be like, yeah, high rock. So it was also a really good weekend for the Moto2 boys. Uh, Albert got eighth position and Jake Jackson got fifth. So all round, it was quite a... A quite a happy little weekend for the Aspar team. It's good to see. It's good to see because after a couple of years of them kind of struggling with Moto2, they were fighting at the back. They weren't getting points. It's nice to see them consistently having both teams in the points and being able to see them looking happy and getting what they deserve. So moving on to the US um, and the circuit of the Americas, 
First up, I have uh, Mark Marquez's charge back into the points. And not even just his charge back into the points, he was in the top 10 suddenly. He finished in sixth position. And this was after he'd had an issue with the bike at the very start and the start of the race where he dropped right back to dead ass last. So to be able to come back through like that, I know like everyone knows he is the king of Kota. This is a circuit he absolutely adores. So you would expect that he would be able to fight back like that. But this is a completely different bike to the one that he's been on for any of his world championship rides. Like he's had almost on and off two like two years of no real action or very little racing action. So it's completely natural for him to for, for, to look at it and be like, yeah, you can't expect him to be getting these amazing results every weekend. But to come back after you've had another episode of Double Vision and to go from dead ass last because there was a mis there was an issue with your bike to sixth position in front of the reigning world champion. Let me tell you, like that is that is some hella ride. Yeah, I've got no real words for it. It's just absolutely mind-blowing. So second on the list is Cameron Bobier's pole position. It was quite a historic one because I think he is the first American rider with an American team to take pole position in America, which is quite the patriotic, patriotic stat, really. Cam's such a nice guy as well, and he's been... He had quite a, a rough rookie season um still to, like learning all of these tracks that he's not been to and the majority of them never been to some of them he went to in uh, Red Bull rookies all those years ago but it's nice to see him finally finding his feet and whilst it wasn't the weekend that they wanted didn't get the result they wanted he had issues with his gearbox um and with the with a false neutral and then he had the unfortunate crash with five corners still to go it's a turning point for him to be able to see that he went out there and he set the lap record and but uh, I think that's the lap record from Moto2 if I remember rightly but don't quote me on that and he did that all by himself he wasn't looking for a toe he wasn't needing anyone else to he just went out and did it so this is whilst it's bittersweet that he didn't get the podium he wanted didn't get the win he wanted and in the end, he ended up not being able to finish. This is still like quite a momentous moment where he should be able to look back at it in the end and go, yeah, that was a good weekend. I was fantastic that weekend. And unfortunately, it's, that's racing. These things happen. I mean, we saw it in 2018 where literally penultimate corner on the last lap, Marco Bedzecki and Jorge Martin came together and they both crashed out whilst they were fighting for the uh, for the for the win and for the championship. We've seen it before and loads loads of times. It's yeah, it sucks, but sometimes you crash by yourself, sometimes someone takes you out. It's the unfortunate thing of it of competitive sport. Uh, next up I have this is one of my favourites. This is one of my favourites. Jake Dixon's maiden Motor 2 podium. Ugh! Let me tell you, I had a little cry. And I am not ashamed of that. I had a little cry when he got on the podium, when he got P3. I was so happy. Because Jake has put so much work into this. He's had so many, he's had these injuries, he's had these doubts. I don't know if you, if you haven't watched the interview he did with BT Sport, where he talks about the mental struggles that he's been through during his time in Moto2, please watch it. It's a fantastic interview. It's so open and I absolutely adore it. And it's made me really... I already like Jake. I really have a lot of time and love, love for Jake and his, and his wife, Sarah. But it endeared me even more to him, which I didn't really know was possible. I love when people can be open about something like that. So to see him finally be able to get the result that he deserves and be able to show what a talented guy he is, 
I was absolutely to take away. I was in tears. And then I watched his Park Fermi interview and I was in even more tears. And then I watched his interview in the um, the TV compound with PT Sport and I was in even more tears. So it was just, it was a very emotional weekend and I wasn't even there. So anyway, <laughs> went very, very softly there. I'm so sorry. Um, moving on to uh, fourth on my list, I have Arbelino's first win. So this is a, a, I really like Tony as well. He's such a character and I was, I was really happy when he got the move up into Moto2, but he struggled so much and I felt so sorry for him in, when he was with uh, Intac like Umoli. He just couldn't get along with that bike and I felt really bad for him because watching him in Moto3 was an absolute treat because he was, he's so fast, he's such a, He's so good on a bike and he gives some amazing interviews because he is such a character. So to watch him not be able to produce that in 2021 was kind of, it was kind of hard to watch. But now he's with Mark VDS and he's able to actually put in these performances and he's able to get the results that he's deserved. It's just really nice and it's really nice to be able to see people with, who are with teams and have teammates like Sam Lowe's. Sam was on pit Sam was on pit wall cheering him on, congratulating him. He was at the I think he was at the bottom of the podium if I remember rightly. And it's nice when they are able to celebrate together and you've got a team that's completely got your back. You're not just then what they class as a number two rider or whatever. They're not favouring the other person. So it was yeah, it was lovely to see in his interview was peak chaotic absolutely wild Tony and it was lush to see and I love when people show their true personality in interviews like Jake and like Tony and like some of the others do I can't actually think of and some cash for one as an example it's just come to my head I love when they do that and it's not all just like PR BS which is just all the cliche things keep pushing, next time more, blah, 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 blah. anyway, I loved it, and I hope to see many more chaotic, frantic, like a Labrador puppy on sugar, Tony Arbolino-esque interviews moving forward in the year. So finally on my list, I have Diogo Moreira. So Moreira has made, obviously, an, already made an appearance on my lists, and I have a feeling this might be a common occurrence, but that boy is just a fantastic talent. I have no words for it. He's in what race? This is phase four of his career in Moto Three, and he was leading parts of parts of the race. He was fighting way in the front pack for such a long time, and it was just so heartbreaking to see him crash. But I hope he knows that he's got nothing to be like ashamed of for crashing like that. He's in race number four and he was taking on people that have been there for three, four, five more years. I don't know how Maverick Vinala has called this. I wouldn't have called him for the championship. Uh, he was not even on my radar and obviously he was on Mavericks, but... Unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable talent. I can't wait to see him on a podium. And I don't think it'll be very long. Really don't think. I think when we get to Europe and he's back onto circuits that he knows well and he's been to in the junior series, I think that we might see a Morera masterclass, which is what I'm going to start coining it, a Morera masterclass. I can't, I, I'm really looking forward to it. So looking forward to it. But anyway, that is my top 10 moments from the Americas. If you are liking any of my videos, don't forget to subscribe down below and give me a thumbs up. And also drop me a comment on what your top moments were from Argentina and the US. There was actually quite a lot going on in both of them. It was it was a bit wild. I mean, most of two in the US was absolutely crazy, the race. It's just a bit of a crazy weekend and Argentina was just chaotic for not even the best reasons, but hey-ho. 
Anyway, I will be back for what's next? Portugal, Portimao, Miguel Oliveira land. I will be back for Portugal. So I will see you all then. Bye.